Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome to my Knot channel. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the timber hitch versus the clove hitch. We're gonna start off by having a look inside at the work table so that we can get a clear look at how to tie each of the knots. Then we're gonna come back outside and have a look with some real world application and comparison. Okay, so let's get started. Let's first have a look at the timber hitch. The timber hitch is a knot that was traditionally used to attach a rope to a log or pole for hoisting or dragging. The timber hitch is secure while tension is maintained and it's easily untied even after heavy loading. Begin to tie the timber hitch by passing one working end around the log or anchor point. Then wrap the working end once around the standing line. From there, make a few wraps between the working end and the log and adjust the tension in your loop. The timber hitch is held well in place due to friction on the inner wraps. Okay, now let's have a look at how to tie the clove hitch. The clove hitch is a popular hitch knot that offers a fast and easy way to secure a line to an anchor point. Along with the bowline and sheep bend, it's often considered one of the most important knots you can learn. First, I'll show how to tie the clove hitch if you don't have an open-ended anchor point. To tie the clove hitch, begin by passing your line around your anchor point and make a full turn, crossing over your line. From there, slip your working end underneath your wrap and then cinch it up. If you have an open-ended anchor point, you can tie the clove hitch another way. Simply make a loop and then another loop. Place your second loop behind the first and slide your loops over the open-ended anchor point. Both the clove hitch and the timber hitch will hold relatively well as long as there's tension kept on the line and both knots are easily untied even after a heavy load has been applied to them. Alright, now let's head back outside and have a look at these two knots in a comparison. All right, so for the next part of the video, I'm out in the bush lot and I found a fallen tree. Um, one thing with the timber hitch and the clove hitch that uh, we need to keep in mind is that often uh, they're given as examples of a hitch and the example is shown uh, tying the knot on a horizontal log. Um, certainly makes it easier to tie uh, and in ways if the log or the anchor point is horizontal, the knot will function a little better, I suppose, but uh, certainly I don't need a, a log or anchor point down on its side. It can be a vertical anchor point and the knots will work just fine. Uh, so the timber hitch and the clove hitch are both very popular, easy to tie knots, and uh, they can be compared in many ways, not just their ease of tying, but also uh, some of their purposes. So they're both hitch knots, and they can both and are both often used when tying lashing. So starting out the first knot would be either a timber hitch or a clove hitch before you start to do your lashing. Um, this example is just going to compare the two uh, for ease of use and practicality. Okay, so I'm going to begin out here with the, the timber hitch and just get my rope ready. So as we saw inside, to tie a timber hitch, all I need to do is pass around my anchor point, then cross over my working line and then make a few wraps on the inside of my loop like that. So at this stage, the timber hitch is easily adjustable. So I can loosen that up and slide it up and down. It's certainly not a noose in any way because if I let go, it's just gonna come undone. So while I'm holding it with those wraps, I can adjust the size of my loop and then move it to where I want it and once I have it there, it's in place. 
and from there the timber hitch would usually be used uh, in this type of application uh, for moving timbers and the friction in the line is going to hold it in place. So we'll compare now to the clove hitch. So with the clove hitch, I'm just going to pass over my line, cross over, and then I'm going to take my working end and pass it up underneath that second wrap. Okay, so now again, I've got my hitch in place, uh, easy to tie, just like the timber hitch was. Now to loosen and adjust it, it certainly can be done. Uh, it's going to be determined by how much uh, working end I have left. So the further out I make my loop, I'm going to lose working end. And so that's a little bit of a disadvantage on the clove hitch because with the timber hitch, I was able to uh, slide the, the knot up and down um, and it wasn't determined on how much working end I had left. Okay, but it is definitely still doable. Um, and as far as strength goes, uh, they're both at this stage pretty much the same and will function in the same regard. One disadvantage of the clove hitch that I've noticed from experience is that uh, it probably won't do it on this surface because there's a lot of grip material in the bark itself. But if I, yeah, and definitely not. If if the surface is slippery at all, the clove hitch, when it turns around, if it was to rotate around, you can actually rotate off of your working end. So that, okay, and so actually if I, there we go. So that's a good example right there. Um, whereas again, the timber hitch, if I tie this, I go around. And so now if I tried pulling sideways on this, you know, and down, it's not going to undo itself. And it's actually kind of surprising because uh, the timber hitch is only held together with those uh, turns around itself. So, um, so that's one disadvantage over the clove hitch that I've found is just that if it does turn, especially on a slippery surface, it can unwind itself off of its working end. Um, now, I should show as well that uh, there's another knot. If you're interested in comparing other knots, then I highly recommend my video, the taut line versus the midshipman's hitch. Link in the description and also at the end of this video. Now this is often, you actually see this done a lot and people just refer to this as a timber hitch, but this is called a killick hitch. And all it is is if I do a, another wrap further up the log, then my timber hitch, this is a killick hitch and it just enables, if I was to pull the log, I could have this wrap further down the log and it'll help guide or direct. Um, and tying it is easy. All you need to do is remember that before you do your timber hitch, when you make your pass around your log, I'm gonna take my working line and I'm gonna put it away from wherever I'm gonna tie my timber hitch. So if I'm planning to, like this is the standing part, so if the standing part's gonna go that way and I'm gonna drag the log that way, then my working end will be on that side. So I wrap away from where I'll tie my timber hitch and then pass around my anchor point again. do my wraps All right now I can adjust that and there's my my killick hitch 
Now, I don't know why they call it a killick hitch and not just a timber hitch with an additional wrap. Uh, I can actually change this timber hitch and then come back down to finish with my clove. And we'll get the same sort of effect, except I find that the clove hitch loses its strength a little because the line is being pulled this way. So a clove hitch definitely has more strength when you're coming off in a straight line. All right, so there you have it, the timber hitch versus the clove hitch. Now, in my opinion, it's worth comparing knots from time to time to see which one is superior in different applications. So as promised, here's a link to my video, the top line versus the midshipman's hitch. I hope you check it out. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and if you'd like to see other videos and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, okay? Thanks for watching.